Good morning. It is day number 39 of 40 Days for Life, and we are getting up and gearing, uh, gearing up and getting ready. Our uh, closing rally, originally we were planning to have an event at our headquarters, but of course there's a lot of um, concern right now with this El Paso County judge uh, that placed a lockdown uh, in effect again, and that they're still trying to figure out if actually he's even able to do that. But in the meantime, uh, we've suspended our public vigil portion there in um, our office, and so it also makes sense that we would not gather with an even larger group, of course, in the midst of this. So instead, we will be pivoting to a virtual closing event that's going to be tomorrow, Sunday, November 1st at 2.30 p.m. So what you can do is you can go to our YouTube page or our Facebook page, and it will be streaming to both of those events. So you can click on the reminder button and you should get a notification as we get closer. So uh, make sure you save all that information. This uh, Our closing event is going to include uh, Pastor Eddie Lee from the Harvest Christian Center. Uh, their church has been very involved. And then Father Mark Salas from Our Lady of Assumption Parish. Um, and, and he, of course, is incredibly involved as well as uh, their church. There's a lot of youth uh, from that parish that are very involved on the sidewalk. And uh, because we're going virtual, we're actually going to be able to have a special guest who is our attorney, Mike Seibel, from Abortion on Trial up in Albuquerque. And he will have an update on this really shocking story we've been talking about the last few days of this arrest after a botched abortion where the where the woman and her husband were arrested. So he'll be given an update on that. And we also are going to announce our hopeful um, strategy plan uh, as we move forward to help make sure that this temporary closure in Santa Teresa becomes permanent. So definitely check it out because we're going to be uh, announcing all of that on the event. Um, now, yesterday, uh, our attorney did release the full medical board complaint that was filed um, about this incident uh, and, and has already been sent to the New Mexico Medical Board and um, and then released it publicly. And so um, definitely check out the link to abortionontrial.org. And this article is on there. Uh, but it mentions that um, uh, it talks about this event where, you know, a woman was witnessed going into the abortion clinic and then being escorted out by police after they uh, botched her abortion such that she delivered her child at home. And then when brought, she brought the baby back at this point, she bonded and connected to what she formerly couldn't see, uh, even with the remains of the baby and wanted to have like a, a cremation and a funeral, like a little funeral to kind of have closure from this mistake that she made. And she was denied that. And she got um, emotional and was arrested for disturbing the peace. Um, but we fortunately, um, we were able to uh, respond. And um, interestingly, this is not only just, uh, you know, an abandonment of a patient, which is illegal, is just really is just wrong and unethical, of course. So um, it also mentions that they still have yet to, um, by law, require uh, hand over her medical records for the entire event. So um, they've been trying to to get those medical records to see, you know, if there's something that she's, she still has no idea what's going on. We're trying to get her into, to see somebody, uh, you know, pro-life doctor just to make sure everything is okay. Um, but ultimately she was just, you know, mistreated and abandoned and then ultimately arrested on the same baby she delivered uh, on the same day. I'm sorry that she delivered her baby. Yeah. Even to see, she realized what she had done. And so this is the opposite of, you know, empowerment. This is the opposite of lifting women up. This is using and exploiting and putting women through absolute miserable experiences like this, because that is no fun. I don't care what side of the issue you're on, but we need to have, remember, I mean, we love them both has been our theme in the past. And everyone loves to say, yes, we love them both. We got to love mom and baby. Um, and so these are chances where we have an opportunity to be that, that first introduction of Christ's mercy by not casting the first stone and just realizing that, Hey, we're just here to help you, you know, so just clean. And so, um, so anyway, definitely check out that letter. I'm not going to read it all. It's like four pages, really long and lengthy, but it goes into all kinds of information. Maybe I can cover another day with, 
um, cases that medical malpractice lawsuits against Dr. Thiard, including one that we just learned about that is pending in August 2021. Uh, there's a family that is suing him uh, for wrongful death. So, um, so that being said, we're going to wrap up day number 39 with our intention, which is to pray that volunteers replace the exhaustion and the discouragement with rejoicing over the miracles that we have seen thus far and enthusiastic service as God takes us on to victory. The scripture is from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 6 and 7 that says, In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, through though it be tested by fire, may be found praise and honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, the, and the reflection prepared for t- today says that we have reason to rejoice when we consider the many babies whose lives have been saved during 40 Days for Life and for Life efforts. Of course, add, add to those lives the men and the women who have been spared from this devastating decision and now have an opportunity to make a plan for their baby that is both life-affirming and God-honoring. And d- so directly... In or indirectly, no matter how you have helped or contributed to these testimonies, uh, that is that is truly your sacrificial service that has made that possible. So, um, or if you have been grieved by various trials during your commitment to forty days, then the attacks of the enemy might come in many forms, like difficult relationships or finances or health, or maybe you are just physically and mentally exhausted, and you've been marking off the calendar, eagerly waiting for day number 40 to come. Um, But consider these trials in light of God's plan. The Apostle Paul understood the big picture when he said in Romans 8, 18, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. This is our hope and our victory. Let us rejoice in the opportunity to give us that hope to others in our path. And so we pray in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we sing to you a new song. You have done marvelous things. Forgive us when we allow circumstances to defeat us. You give us power to faint and increase, you in, and you increase strength in those who have no might. We rest in you, dear Lord, and ask you to empower us again for your service as you work out your plan for us and through us. May you receive glory through our victory in Christ whose name we pray. Amen. And of course, I thank you for your sacrificial support of our mission, your daily prayers for our team, your witness of open mercy, and may God reward you and your family always. And I look forward to seeing you on the sidewalk. God bless.